Yo, I am Dr. Cool. What if the dream of green energy to save the planet is a hoax? What if it's just an illusion to exploit the world of their money? Maxwell Chikumbutso's groundbreaking invention, a self-powered car that requires no external charging, has not only defied conventional scientific understanding, but also opened a Pandora's box of questions about the true motives behind the global push for green energy. In our endeavor to unlock the potential that will free humanity from shackles of energy crisis, world leaders and physics laws shouldn't be a stumbling block or dictators of what comes and goes, but our very need should be first. Our mission objectives shouldn't be dependent on mere laws of human that isn't supplemental over divine. In a world where governments and corporations loudly advocate for a transition from internal combustion engine vehicles to electric vehicles, Chikumbutso's innovation stands as a direct challenge to the trillion dollar industries that depend on energy scarcity. The fundamental question is this, are Western governments genuinely committed to saving the environment or are they using climate change as a pretext to push expensive new technologies that continue to generate profits while keeping the world locked in energy dependency? The very fact that a self-sustaining zero-emission vehicle is not being celebrated as a historic breakthrough, but instead faces suppression and skepticism, raises serious doubts about the true intentions behind the so-called Green Revolution. For decades, Western governments have pushed the narrative that carbon dioxide emissions from fossil fuels are the primary driver of climate change. While it is undeniable that pollution and environmental degradation are serious issues, the way CO2 has been politicized suggests that it is being used not just as a scientific concern, but as a tool for control and economic redirection. The push for net zero and the demonization of fossil fuels have created the perfect environment for a technological shift, one that conveniently benefits industries that Western governments have heavily invested in. The transition to electric vehicles is presented as an environmental necessity, but when we examine the economics, a different picture emerges. EVs are outrageously expensive compared to ICE cars, and their maintenance costs are even higher. Battery replacements alone can cost nearly as much as a used car, and the infrastructure needed to support EVs, charging stations, grid expansions, and rare earth mineral mining, ensures that control over energy remains centralized. If governments were truly committed to a greener future, wouldn't they embrace technologies that offer genuine energy independence? Instead of promoting self-powered or decentralized energy solutions, they push electric vehicles that still rely on electricity generated largely from fossil fuels. The mining of lithium, cobalt and nickel, essential components of EV batteries, has severe environmental and ethical consequences, including deforestation, water pollution and child labour in developing countries. Chikumbutso's self-powered car represents a direct threat to this carefully crafted transition. If a vehicle could generate its own energy indefinitely, what would happen to the trillion dollar energy market? Oil companies, utility providers and even governments rely on the continued consumption of energy to sustain their economic models. A world where individuals can power their own cars and homes without paying energy bills would mean financial collapse for those who profit from scarcity. History has shown that disruptive technologies are often met with resistance. From Nikola Tesla's experiments with wireless energy to suppressed water-powered engines, every major energy breakthrough that threatens centralized control has been dismissed, ridiculed, or buried. Chikumbutso's case appears no different. Western governments justify the high cost of electric vehicles and renewable energy infrastructure by arguing that it is necessary for the planet's survival. However, when we look deeper, we see that their approach is not about solving environmental issues, but about shifting profits from one sector to another. The same oil giants that controlled the fossil fuel industry are now heavily investing in lithium mining and battery production. Major car manufacturers are reaping massive subsidies to produce electric vehicles that remain unaffordable for the average consumer. Moreover, the sustainability of electric vehicles is questionable. 
The electricity used to charge them often comes from coal or natural gas, meaning the reduction in emissions is far less significant than advertised. Meanwhile, developing countries are being stripped of their natural resources under the guise of green technology, repeating the cycle of exploitation that defined the fossil fuel era. The global energy shift is not about solving climate change. It is about maintaining financial dominance. Governments are not eliminating fossil fuel dependency, they are simply replacing it with a new equally expensive and controlled system. If true energy freedom were the goal, we would see investments in alternative solutions like self-powered vehicles, hydrogen fuel, and decentralized energy grids. Instead, we see the same corporations profiting, the same consumers, struggling and the same environmental destruction, just under a different name. If Chikumbutso's technology proves viable, it could force a reckoning in the energy sector. However, history suggests that such innovations rarely make it to mass adoption without overcoming significant obstacles. Whether through legal barriers, corporate buyouts or outright suppression, the forces that control the world's energy supply will not easily relinquish their grip. The million dollar question remains, are we truly transitioning to a greener future or are we simply being sold a new illusion? If governments were serious about solving climate change, they would champion innovations that provide real solutions. Instead, they appear more focused on ensuring that energy remains a commodity controlled by the few rather than a freely available resource for all. Perhaps it's time to reconsider not just our approach to energy, but also the motives of those leading the transition. Is the climate crisis being used as a genuine call to action, or is it another carefully designed system of control, one that keeps humanity trapped in a cycle of dependency and artificial scarcity? Check out the 2025 water-powered car in my channel. It's cost 1.7 million to purchases. Not only that, it was approved. Why cost it's dependent on replaced synthetic salt water? That's the selling point to keep you running rat race, even as it claimed to have 600 kmh per recharge that takes about a minute. It doesn't worth that 1.7 million, but however, that's the kind of information you will be seeing floating every second on the Western mainstream media, including the SIB truck. Because this technology that are not only costing you arms and legs, it's a piston cash cow machine. Can anyone tell me what Western automotive industry romantic relationship with world leaders genuinely have in common? Aside keeping people in chains of energy dependence and product seeing that doesn't lag behind the real and true technology innovations. It's high time we seat up and stand up for what we truly want. If the term democracy is not an illusion, the government should stand aside and let us decide what our dream will be, when it will be and how it will be not them dictating what we should live up to, be paying endless bills that keeps us perpetually poor. If the, the Maxwell Chikumbutso revolution is the key to liberate up from shackles of fossil fuels, who cares if it defies even heaven's laws, not to mention human laws written with loads of errors. Until we confront these questions, true energy freedom will remain just out of reach.